kind of like if I played basketball and I was on the bench while he played. I'm still cheering him on from right. the bench. Right. Ooh, yay. When he's tired and needs to come sit down and drink Gatorade, I'm ready to take his place on the court. Yo. So you can do it. Doc. Doc. This, you come to the table like this. What's happening? No cap. We went AO. About to get a play. Oh, pull up to the table. Let's go. So real estate investing is a $10.5 trillion industry. Let me say that one more time. The real estate investing industry is $10.5 trillion a year industry. And a survey reveals that 28% of Americans prefer investing into real estate over stocks, which uh, I wouldn't say that's better or is it worse. I, I think both have its equal importance, right? It's a great way to make money and secure your financial future, but you can also lose money if you do not invest correctly. And if you don't get the wise investment strategies and tips and wisdom on how to properly invest. Now, you all know me when it comes to real estate investing. My preferred method is that you are debt free. OK, you have a fully funded emergency fund. It makes absolutely no sense to be going out here racking up and getting all these properties and you don't even have a thousand dollars in your emergency fund but you're talking about like yo bro but i got like i got like a hundred grand in equity but it's not liquid cash to where if you needed to pay for to replace a tire or get home to a loved one you can't do that quickly and so be debt free have a fully funded emergency fund and, and when it comes to investing, I'm really excited about this because my mentor um, and friend, Dave Ramsey, he says, yo, use cash to invest into real estate. And I'll be honest, I'm, I'm investing a little bit. I have not invested into a whole lot of real estate. So I went on a search. I went on a search to find someone who has done that method. And while I was researching and looking up, I came across a system. A, a, a sister, not a sister, a S-I-S-T-A, a, 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 a sister that looked like me. And she's like 10 years younger than me. And she's doing it. And she is paying cash. Her and her husband are millionaires. Her and her husband are in their 20s and they do real estate without racking up any debt. So y'all, today's show is gonna be absolutely amazing. But before we get to today's show, you know, investing in the real estate is important. And to invest, you got to have cash. If you have cash, you have it parking somewhere that's giving a little bit of, you know, return on your money, like a savings account. Check out this quick commercial and we'll get started on today's show. Yo, listen, man, really excited. Prize pool. Go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash savings. Uh, they are where I prefer to park my emergency fund, my savings account when I'm saving to buy real estate, when I'm saving to invest. I park my money over there at savings account. So go check them out um, at anthonyoneal.com forward slash savings. But today on the show, I have Dr. Jamisa Bennett, a doctor. I mean, so not only is she wealthy, she a doctor. I mean, she an educated doctor, like, like a legit doctor. And Jamisa is a real estate investor who teaches people how to build a debt-free, 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 debt-free real estate portfolio. She's also personally debt-free, personally debt-free. I'm going to repeat it one more time. She is personally, her and her husband are personally debt-free. And did I say this already? She a sister. Y'all, let's welcome my friend, my new friend to the table. Dr. Jamisa Bennett. What's up, sis? Hi. Yeah. Yo, when you walk through the front door, I was like, oh, yeah, she a vibe. <laughs> Yo, you're, you're definitely a people's person. Yeah. You love people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My team walked through the door. I was like, yo, that's Dr. Jamisa. You know, she's a multimillionaire. He was like, she said, right now I'm eating. That's it. Yo, you chilling. I came in asking for food. You sure did. did. Where's the food? Everybody's eating. I want to eat. You break <laughs> bread with your people. Where is the food? Yo, I, I was like, yo, this is... Yo, I love it. I mean, yeah. your energy is is amazing. Let me turn on my clock. Because if I don't turn on the clock, my producer will be like, uh, hey, yo. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, um, we're going. Yeah, exactly. Hey, can, can, can you reset that? All right, cool. Um... So let's get straight to it because people are, are saying, wait, wait, wait. So she's, she's, how old are you again? 28. How old is your husband? 30. How many kids you have? Four. Four, four kids. We have a dog too. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we got one son, three daughters, and a puppy. And a puppy. Who's the oldest? Your son the oldest? Son. He's the oldest. Oh, that's good. He just turned eight. 
Yeah, that's good. That's good. So he he gonna be like me. He gonna be the big brother, protecting his little sisters. Yeah. And the dog's gonna be protecting all of them. Yeah, I feel like he's already the boss of the household. He negotiates really well. Yesterday though, he did say they are pestering him. <laughs> I feel like he'll have the PhD next. I don't know. He he's different. You have to interview him. Uh, uh, I'm that's bring a him. real thing. I should have told you to bring you bring him with you. I usually do. Today was a school day though. So we got a whole like work life balance thing going on. Yeah. Um, I hate the word balance because usually if one thing's up, the other is down. Right. So I would say more like a flow. Yeah, that's good. And I love that. That's I love good. that we are breaking like norms for what black family and black love looks like. For we do real. what works for us. For real. Yeah. What do you what do you think is a norm for black love and black families? Like what would you say is that norm? <laughs> Struggle love. Oh, shoot. Um <laughs> if I had if I had to just like kind of call it out, you you get First of all, <laughs> as African American people, we let love and loyalty become a prison for us, oh, shoot. and um, we get bogged down to like gender roles and who does what. Like you know, usually the husband's out first thing in the morning, so the wife is getting the kids ready for school and making breakfast and packing lunches. We intertwine what needs to be done when it needs to be done, and our love doesn't hurt. If something wow. does not work, we express that. Wow. So now we've been together since 2011, since I was 17 years old. Wow. We've been married for five years, though. Okay, okay. And I'm saying consecutively, all of those years, we have been together, so we know each other. Mm -hmm. You know, we grow together. We fuss. Yeah. He's my best friend. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like that's the best part about this whole journey. Yeah. Everything. Everything that I am today is because of him and his support. Yeah. And he's, like, not on the fence about it. Yeah. Like, he doesn't care. He's like, oh, it's your turn to do an interview? Knock him dead. Wow. Not like, oh. You need to be the one doing X, Y, Z. No. He's like, oh, you want to hire help? Cool. Like, he let me get a nanny. He let Did me get a chef. He let me do it. I cook really well, too. Wow. But he knows sometimes I'm tired. Yeah, yeah. Right? So I think having a good partner in this, that's like the deal breaker. It's going to either make everything or break it. And I hate to see alpha women, you know, kick this. Not I don't need a man thing. I think feminism, um, it took us for a whole journey. <laughs> And don't get me wrong, I am a black woman. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was raised by a black woman. I understand the power of a black woman, but I know that it is not sufficient without the power and strength of a black man. It literally, you need one. One hand washes the other. It's the power of two. Just say that one more time, the, the black man part. Oh, you just one. need it. We need a black. Listen, yeah, 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 I'm a force. Whole vibe. Oh my without God. my husband, I don't know. I'm just eating. <laughs> I heard someone say yesterday that a black woman doesn't need a black man for anything. Mm, they made that up. <laughs> they made that up. I think that we are sometimes so used to being let down because we set expectation without GPS, right? So, like, if you want to go to Walmart and you're in a new place, you'll say, I want to go to Walmart, and you will allow Siri to tell you how to get there. Wow. You get a black man and you're like, I want you to be a one percenter but you don't leave room for the navigation for that man to get there. So because we kind of, you know, know that this might not go right, we kind of like tell ourselves we don't want it. Wow. And st instead of just making room for error. Wow. Would you say you're an alpha woman? I would. Do you think that is a downfall for you and for your marriage? No, because when I'm home, first of all, when you're an alpha woman, you run everything. Yeah, yeah. When you get in the house, you don't want to run nothing. <laughs> You tell them I'm tired. I've been telling people what to do all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you tell us what we eat so I can just cook. I don't feel like thinking. <laughs> the laundry needs to be washed. Let me do that. Because your, your mind um, is so consumed with just your day-to-day -day activities as a successful business owner. You know, being a woman, you got to put this, like, tough exterior on, too. Especially in real estate. It's male-dominated. Right? Yeah, yeah. So when I get home, I want to be safe. Mm -hmm. I want to be free. I want to take the wig off. Yeah, you yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I want to be myself. Yeah, yeah. And it's impossible to do that if you go home, like, or all of this weird. So it's just like you working a full-time job around the clock, 24-7. I had someone on the show, I won't say her name because I want to be respectful, but she made me, she requested, she didn't make me do anything. She said she was an alpha woman, mm -hmm. and she told her husband what to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> she made me and CJ not do the show no. because she was embarrassed by saying she's an alpha woman. Yeah. And I'm like, there's nothing wrong with saying oh. you're an alpha woman. But if you're an alpha woman, when you go home to your husband? Yeah, something's wrong. I mean, and it's not really, it's not because right, you're still an alpha woman when you're with your husband. Yeah. It's just that you know how to submit to y'all's vision, y'all's partnership. Yeah, it's called leading from behind. Oh. Because a woman's job naturally is to support the role of that man. Now, as a good partnership, 
he want what's best for y'all anyway. Right. So you still have a common interest and a common goal in mind. So it's not like you're forcing him to do anything that wasn't going to get done anyway. Right. You're now just helping him. It's kind of like if I play basketball and I was on the bench while he played. I'm still cheering him on from right. the bench. Right. Ooh, yay. When he's tired and needs to come sit down and drink Gatorade, I'm ready to take his place on the court. Yo. So you can do it. Doc. Doc. You come to the table like that's, this? That's my guy, though. He, he's definitely my best friend. Man, I can yeah. tell. Yeah. I, man, I sh man, I needed him on the show because I, I think a lot of men, and it's, we're going to get to why you're here because we, we want to learn how to get to this bag, yeah. right? But I think a lot of men are like, okay, cool. I don't think men are intimidated by alpha women. They're not intimidated by successful women, no. but they're turned off by women who don't know how to come home and be the woman, be the right. wife, be the mother, be the supporter, yeah. be the helpmate. Yeah. They want to come in and be the masculine, the boss, you know? Yeah. And, and and I don't want that. No. But when you go out, man, if I got if I got to carry your purse while you working, mm. I got See? you. That's it. I got you, girl. Listen. I mean, I, yeah, you need you need He'd Make like, up he's in the your way, purse. The way crooked, moving. He, Listen, yeah. I got you. Yeah. But when we come home, I need you to be my wife. That's it. And I'm gonna be your husband. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna protect you. I'm gonna provide. Yeah. Who we gonna make four kids? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sees love <sighs> and sees operation. I feel like marriage is a partnership. You can't lose sight of it. So yeah, yeah. it is operational. It has to be come functional. Oh. So, like, we'll talk about men and they're emotional or whatever, but if you thinking for him, how you want him to go outside and make decisions? <clears throat> he doesn't know how. He's not comfortable or confident enough to say anything because he's looking over his shoulder like, am I in trouble? It's one of those things where, like, unconsciously women become the mother figure in their marriage. And they get upset because I can't relax. I don't feel safe. I don't have the stability. Bro, you took that. Get a ball back. And he might not make the shot. Like, we got to call a spade a spade. He might not make the shot. But praise the fact that he took it. Ooh. Because then the next time he'll learn, damn, my angle was off. Maybe I should have moved ooh, over a little ooh, bit. So ooh. it's just a lot of stuff. Is that like one of those things where you just do that right there? Like, That's insane. Can we just oh, get that right there, right there, boy? Oh, man. She said, praise the fact that your man even took the shot. Yeah. And you know what? And let's get, let's, let's get to this bad. Yeah. You said something that was just so... Is so good that I think a lot of men are wanting is they want to be celebrated by their loved ones yeah. for even making the attempt. Yeah. Because I know a lot of men who are not even making the attempt. Yeah. You know, they're not even trying to strive to be better. You know, they're, they're, they're just, they're okay with just settling. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't, me and my, uh, my boy CJ, my producer, man, we're always talking about what can we do more? What, what can we do more for our families, yeah. for our kids? You know, every time I talk to him, he's thinking about his lady, his daughter, his son. He's always thinking about what can I do to better my family? Yeah. And I just love how I love hearing like y'all two do that for each other. Yeah. Um, so you all uh, recently paid off some debt and it really wasn't a lot. Let's be honest. Not so the crazy thing is, <coughs> woo, um, I never allow myself to get in debt hmm. ever. Mm. We we got that in common simply because I don't remember to pay bills. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> what day is it? The first? Is it doing the fifth? It becomes a thing. It is to be managed and it is to be played with. Like, we had a conversation earlier and we talked about a very prominent investor mm -hmm. and how that person just loves leveraging and he likes to, to get in debt. Yeah. But it's at the expense of other people. Yeah. See, if it was his own debt, it would be okay. Yeah, yeah. But you have a whole foundation. Yeah. You have an enterprise. Right. Which is forcing other families to build into your American dream. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That doesn't even make sense. It's not even ethical if you think about it. Um, but you know, neither here nor there. That's what works for that person. Me, when I originally got started in real estate, so my husband, he already had a construction background. His father was a carpenter. So like that was his hands-on thing. Okay. Boom. I was 19 years old and my grandma passed away. So I'm the eldest of 10, okay. hence the people's person. I know how to get things done. You got 10 siblings? I have 10 siblings. Yo, and I'm the oldest. you're the oldest. Yeah. I've been Big Misa for a while, even when I was small. <laughs> <laughs> so um, she passes away. I'm on her D because at 19, I had a car. I feel like I was in college, had a job. You know, I was Jamisa. Right? right. And so she, she passes away. My name is on this piece of paper. I'm like, <gasps> wow. so I'm like, well, what are we going to do? He said, well, we can stop paying rent here and we can just move in. 
and fix it up. Right. It's a vibe. I'm like, oh, that sounds good. Okay, we're going to yeah. move into grandma's house. Yeah. Grandma, she tying shirts and run the pipes under the sink. What? Grandma got the drop ceiling with the panel on the wall. The original hardwood ain't even hard no more. Got the squeeze. <laughs> so, you know, is this a thing that we have to make decisions because where we lived at the time, although we were paying probably way too much, it was fit for millennials. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, this is prior to us having children. Okay. So I feel like we were on the brink of actually having our first. No, I had my son when I was 21. So we were like on a journey. <coughs> just us. Long story short, we end up like we got to fix this up. Then we realize we can't afford it mm. unless we went into debt. Mm. But at this point, we don't really even understand what debt looks like. Mm. Credit, leverage, mm. equity. It was a crap ton of it. Mm -hmm. Right. She, it was free and clear when she mm. passed away. Right. And then you got the American greed. Yep. So my family, which is father, uncle, uh, no, three uncles and an aunt, twice my senior, they didn't even know it was mine. So they like going at each other like, yeah, I'm doing this, changing the locks. Um, so my great grandma, who raised me, she pulled me to the side and she said, you're going to have to tell them that's your house. No. Look what they're doing to each other. I don't want to intervene. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let them have at it. But just like clockwork, I did end up having to tell them because they was just taking liberties that weren't theirs, right? Wow. <laughs> and um, magically, they stopped hating each other and joined forces to hate me. It was a wonderful thing. <laughs> I put my family together. Um, anyways, it ended up not working out. We couldn't afford to fix it. It's like every time we touched something, something else broke. Bro. Mm -hmm. uh, it just was a lot. And then it was up for sheriff sale at a point. Right? Okay. And this is my first time even knowing that people can take your house. I thought when something was yours, it belonged Yo, to you. Yeah, yeah. Nah, that's not how it works. So I'm like, okay, either they're going to take it or I'm going to sell it. Right. And the guy who lived next door to my grandma at the time, well-shaved, three-piece suit, cufflinks. Right. Three-story house, rooftop deck, brand new construction. Right. Which mirrors every other house that's on that block. I don't even know gentrification when I see it. I never knew what it was called. Right. I remember that block had no houses on it. Right. <laughs> Anyways, he gives me the number to his realtor. Uh, we list it. He said, hey, we'll list it at 115, which was really cool to me because as we're putting it together, we were getting offers for like 60 and 50. And they were saying, hey, this, it needs a lot of work. That's all it's worth. It's a lot. Let me just take it off your hands. Mm -hmm. So when he says 115, I'm like, are you sure? He's like, yeah. Six days in, we had a bidding war. 152. Cash. 152 cash. And I, it was six days. I didn't right. even let it keep going. Right. I was like, take that one because I was scared. Like, right. I didn't know how it worked. I'm thinking, can they change their mind? You know. So, whatever. Took the offer, cleared $152,000, and we were on our way. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, was that the beginning process of y'all's real estate journey? Because I know your husband was in construction. Yeah. But, but for he you did on like, your side. Uh, commercial buildings. But okay. his dad had pharmacy contract stores and stuff like that. But he never owned property. I don't think he looked <clears> at <throat> it from that point of view. It was still worker mindset. Because even with his dad, he's a carpenter. He has a construction company. He does lead abatement at all. Mm -hmm. But he still worked every day. Like, that's kind of all they know to do as men sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was our first introduction to real estate. So you are 28. Until September. Until yeah, so you're 28 until September today, right? Mm -hmm. You own 28 properties. Properties. Is it 29 now? 28, 29. 28, 29, and 27, 28 of them are 100. percent All of them are debt free except one. Except one. Let's start from the beginning. How do you do that? Okay. So here we are, 152. Um, nice agent made a commission. It's great. Nice agent introduces me to nice friend who's a financial advisor. Okay. Financial advisor says, hey, give it all to me right now. Come back when you're 60. I'll put it in a Roth IRA. What is that? Oh, it's just something that, you know, it's an investment tool. We call it an investment vehicle. Okay, so what do you invest in? Stocks. Uh, he didn't say real estate. He just gave me a bunch of scenarios. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what happens if I need money in the meantime? Because I don't want to go back to work. That's crazy. Right. He's like, oh, well, I'll give it back to you, but you'll be penalized for it. Is I give you my money for free, and then you charge me to get it back. Mm. And I know I'm poor at this. Let's right. keep in mind, I know that we need money. Like, right. I know this. Right, right. So, I'm like, I don't really like the idea. <clears throat> and he was a little agitated with me. Mm -hmm. Like, well, what you going to do? Really? That's, you know, his whole demeanor. I'm going to do what you going to do. You said you're about to invest it, right? Mm. Well, one house got me this much money. I'm going to go buy more of those. Mm. 
And just like that, I got up from the table, and I know they was, like, punching the air behind me. <laughs> I thought it was an easy layup. You know, young black girl, law, she don't know what's going on. Right. She going to give me the money. Right. Or because they tried to tell me I was going to mess it up. Right. No, I'm not. Why would I, why would I mess it up? <laughs> I got this far. Right. So I said, I'm going to buy houses. Um, very arrogant. I underestimated the process for sure, but I meant what I said. Right. So right after that, nice realtor introduces me to nice investor. Mm -hmm. This investor is really nice, though. Yeah. So to, to this day, like, we are still really close friends. He, it was crazy how the guy introduced them to me, though. He was like, yeah, he buys money. I mean, he buys our real estate. He fixes it up. He refiles and he keeps flipping it like drugs. That's what the damn realtor said to me. The realtor's Jewish with blue eyes. So when I meet this investor... I'm thinking it's a mob boss, but no, he one of us. Mm. So when he's flipping real estate and refining, it's like drugs. Is yeah, that yeah. the only thing you can correlate to my small mind? Right. Oh, luckily, my mind was big. Meet the guy. Um, I sit down. He's like, hey, heard you want to buy houses. What do you have to spend? Simple me. We have 150. You never do that. If you're listening, don't ever tell anybody how much you have to spend. <laughs> um, if you don't mind me asking, where'd you get it? Oh, sold my grandma's house in South Philly. Got 150 too. Why? Why'd you sell it? You had equity. You could have refied. You could have fixed it up. You could have. He gave me a laundry list of things in five minutes yeah. that I wrote down. Mm -hmm. um, and that was like my first real crash course at the table. But I still got three properties under contract, sight unseen. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys want to do that either. Um, you know, sight unseen, he had one that had a tenant in it already, great, fully occupied. He had one that had a tree growing. That's my treehouse, baby. So if you ever catch me on YouTube talking about my tree, tree. yep, I got that one for sixty five hundred. Wow. And he, I asked him, well, if you could sell it to me for sixty five, what did you get it for? He said twenty five. Well, where you get that from? He said the auction. So now I remember the sheriff's sale place. They sell people's houses. So they was gonna take my grandma house and sell it for twenty five hundred. Still putting it together as I go along, not right. really knowing right. what it looked like full circle. Long story short, I purchased three houses from him at that time. And then fast forward later, because um, I bought houses from YouTube. Okay. Like people that were on YouTube, Craigslist, Instagram. Yeah. yeah. My first wholesale lesson, I was at the table. Wow. I met a guy on Instagram. House looked really good. The tree house taught me I don't like full rehabs at all. Right. And the guy is like at the closing table with another guy, but the guy's eating chips. The one I met on Instagram, he just eating chips. And I'm like, well, are you guys partners? He's like, no, he's the owner. I'm like, well, who are you, Instagram guy? He said, I'm a wholesaler. Oh, well, what's that? He said, you see line 48, that 15000 I got that for assigning the contract seller to buyer. So at the table, I paid $15,000 to learn how to wholesale. Wow. Um, but, I mean, it was all gains to me. Gotcha. I never looked like, like felt like I was losing because I started with nothing anyway. Right. So I kept going. At the end of the year, we had nine properties, no more money. House rich, cash poor. That was it. House rich. Cash. Mm. Half of the portfolio was producing. No, I would say a little more than half. I think we only maybe had three or four that actually needed work. Okay. So we got some tenants. I really learned that I like turnkeys okay. early on. So now we're down to our last. I can't remember, but it wasn't quite enough to buy a house, so I thought. Okay. Um. So we started to go to the auction. Okay. Let me just figure out what this place is. People go there so we can at least try to squeeze this. I think it was 7500 and we won a property for seventeen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. It was a lot. It was an actual house, but then I go to pay. So mm -hmm. we go up to the front, and they're like, "No, we don't take cash here. Um, not the full amount. You put down a deposit, and you can bring the rest back in thirty days." So that deposit was six hundred dollars. Whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah, that was crazy. I'm confused. You bought it for seventeen hundred mm -hmm. at the auction. Mm -hmm. But you only put down... A deposit. 10% is what they ask for, but they have a minimum. Okay. So every auction has an opening bid. Yeah. They have a deposit that's required. Yeah. And they have a time frame in which you are required to pay the balance. Yeah. That's it. 30 days. 30 days. That was for me, 30 days. Okay. Some places give you nine months. Okay. Some people give you a week. Some okay. people want it at the end of the business day. Right. Depends on the market that you're in. Okay. But that was crazy to me. Yeah, yeah. Because 600, well, we had that when we were poor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's when I learned that the auction was a wonderful place. <laughs> Six hundred dollars is what you put down. Yeah. And you had thirty dollars to do the thirty, 30 days, days to, to bring to them eleven hundred back. So, uh, am I am, am I guessing ahead to here? Are you in a long term keeping or short term? Long term. 
So were you flipping those houses at that time at the auctions? No. So at that point, I couldn't believe we just purchased a seventeen hundred dollar property. But moving forward, every time we got a loan on cash, we were flipping them. So selling it before the balance was due in that thirty day time period. So this was our way to accumulate liquid cash without having to put out anything more than ten percent down. So here's my question, because you're teaching me. I'm not in this space, and so I'm asking all the questions for all of us, right? That's fine. What kind of house is what kind of house does seventeen hundred dollars purchase? Mm, so the seventeen hundred dollars that was actually a lot parcel of land, which in turn I end up using as a parking lot. Got you. Six hundred dollars a month. So houses, I mean, they're going to always need work. Yeah, yeah. But the value of something. Remember what we just talked about with husbands and yeah, wives, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You might have a diamond. Right. If you dig it out the dirt, you got to clean it. Yeah, you got to yeah, yeah. polish it. Yeah, you yeah. understand? Yeah. But it's still a diamond. Right, right. That's real estate. Right. You're going to get a property. It's cheap because probably nobody wants it. Mm -hmm. It's in a crazy area mm -hmm. or it needs a lot of work. And then most investors, they're shooting for specific areas. You might get something that's in an area that's like crazy. People still live there, though. Mm -hmm. Right? So you have to consider all of those things when purchasing. But no, you won't get a turnkey for seventeen hundred dollars. No, right. but you will get an opportunity. Ooh, now that was a, well, that was a my job. No turnkey, but you will get an opportunity. Yeah. And the opportunity may not come today. No. But it will come. Yeah. So would you say out of those properties, some of that is going to be transferred to your kids? Oh, most of it. Most of it. Most of it. The only things that will not be. Um, it's things that are not in an irrevocable trust, and that's like leveraging, like Monopoly, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Because you always want to keep liquid available to you mm -hmm. just because, like you said, but if you get a flat tire yeah. or you need something crazy, you want to have that option, right. but you should always have. So you look at emergency fund like 100000 or whatever number you use. Right. We look at emergency fund like this amount of assets, yeah. X amount of assets available to you. Got you. So we'll use some as pawns for sure. That's what it's for. Right. But for the most part, you hold as many as you can because it's musical cheers. What is the goal of you and your husband? I'm curious financially. What, what's oh, y'all's goal? Man, so my husband wants to make six hundred thousand dollars a month. I think he said in on fifty different states too. I gotta ask him again. Something crazy. Mm -hmm. He wants something crazy, but he's a philanthropist. Mm -hmm. So we both come from really, really humble beginnings, like yeah. troubled homes, all of those stuff. So like he does not waste food. Cause he remembers times where he was hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like for me, uh, I wasn't a foster kid, but I was raised by my grandparents. Mm -hmm. um, my mom was young, my dad was young. They was trying to figure it out. So I have a soft spot for children, hence the foster care initiative that I have going on now. So yeah, we just like giving back. I don't think we came up with a numeric goal. I mean, millionaire was always a thing. Right. Everybody's a millionaire now, so we was like, oh, this is kind of easy. So obviously, you say billionaire, but I feel like our financial goal is to create commas for our children. Mm. That's like a big thing. We do look up like Rothschild stuff. It's a book called What Would the Rothschilds Do? Mm. Um, and we started to look at control. Say that one more time. What, what would, would the Rothschilds do? What would the Rothschilds do? Oh, I'm sorry. What, did the, what would the Rockefellers do? I think that's what it's called. What would, yeah, I was about to say, yeah, I, I'm about to look that up do? right now. You know, when you name books, yeah. I'm like, hold up. Uh, Yep. What would the Rockefellers uh, do? What um, would the Rock... Oh, yep. Yeah. What would the Rockefellers do? He, and it's about kids? It's not about kids. It was more so how he set up the generational wealth. So, okay, PhD, it is honorary, but I had to do a dissertation. Let me tell you how that came about. Um, I was speaking at schools because I'm young and relatable, and I, I prompted them to try something. I said, hey, you guys all have student loans. You guys all are going to get a refund check. Take that refund check and go to the auction. Mark my words. And I told them what I got with my refund check when I was in college, which was a pair of Tory Burch flats, a bunch of sweaters from Forever 21. What else? I guess I'm crazy. But for those of you who are listening, a refund check is extra money that comes to you after your fast was paid. Mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So take this and go to the auction. I'm telling you it's $1,700, $1,800. Mm -hmm. Long story short, 35% of the class that I taught really bought houses. And 35% is not a big number, mm -hmm. but I was really good with conversion rates anyway because I'm very natural when I speak to people. I'm like you. I'm one of you. Right. right? Anyway, the Board of Regents was like, hey, do you have an actual curriculum? I was like, no, I got Zoom classes. Send it over. I'm thinking nothing of it. It's me in front of a ring light teaching people. You can still hear that. It's the Q&A. You know how you record the whole segment? Yeah. They're picking through it. I didn't know that they would actually look at it. I didn't know what they were looking at it for. Long story short, they then offered me an adjunct professor position. 
Um, I did really good. They saw how I was operating, and they wanted to offer me an honorary PhD. Wow. But I had to do my dissertation. So during my dissertation process, um, I was defending generational wealth real estate, you know, that whole bit. And when you Google it, it says money and or assets pass from generation mm. to generation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I argued it. I combated the whole thing. And I said that instead it was work, mm -hmm. which is wisdom, opportunity, resource, and knowledge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I give you money. Yeah, yeah. If you don't know what to do. Like, I could have sold my grandma's house and flexed. I could have did a lot of stuff. Yep. I could have been very afraid and let it go to the auction and mm -hmm. not gained anything. I could have learned my wholesale lesson and thought I was in over my head. I mean, even when I sold her property, I made 152 only to find out I could have sold it for 350 You know, it was so many times where I could have said, this is not for me. Mm -hmm. But I decided to persevere instead. Mm -hmm. And I kind of kept going. And that's how I got to this point. But when you think about money and you think about like how it works, it's nothing more than a tool, mm -hmm. which is why it goes up, it goes down, mm -hmm. you know, it's paper. Mm -hmm. They grow up and tell you money doesn't grow on trees, it's a lie. Mm -hmm. Paper grows on trees, so they print it out. Whoever said it was like, these cliches that they give us. Um, it's super crazy, so our biggest thing is to make sure that our children understand that they have options. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give them flexibility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, expose them to different things. They live on a golf course now and they love it. Mm. Closing on the property, 20,000 square feet, 77 acres of land. What do you do with 77 acres? I don't know yet, but mm -hmm. they're going to do something with it. They'll see it. They'll see it. Uh, my husband, he's in a farming. Yeah. He's from down south originally where his family is. So What's he that? knows What's South that? Carolina. Me too. I'm from yeah. Columbia. He knows all of Riley. You know Riley? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So my grandma right now, where is she? She's in South Carolina too, my great grandma. Anyways... He's into all of that. He used to pick bullets. Wow. And I remember when I, because they still do family reunions, his yeah. family. I would go, and all the kids would get their baskets. And I'm like, we about to go pick cotton? What are we about to do? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, they would be going to pick fruit. And, like, listen, they fished. <sighs> and his uncle would fry the fish. And it was something like I never saw before. I'm a city girl, so I didn't mm. know. Um, But that's what we want to teach them. Yeah. Living off your land, togetherness, family, like, harmony. Yeah, really yeah. harmonizing and not... You know, just the crab in a barrel type of mentality. I feel Because that is very consuming. I feel you. Let me ask you this question. What would you say y'all's net worth is with when it comes to the homes now? Six million. Six million. The portfolio at, with real estate alone. And mm -hmm. as a millennial. Mm -hmm. 28 and 30. I'm, gonna tell, I, I'm just going to pause right there. Yeah. Six million dollars. And that's, and that's papers. See, I go on live, I show my receipts, I show deeds. Because there's a lot of people who cannot do that. We know that because we were going to participate in a hedge fund. Mm. We be doing big boy stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's her. So I, you got to know your numbers. You got to know your numbers. You know, I, I I invited you to the table, man, because someone told me, it's like, man, you can't, you, you, sh you should always borrow money. You should always stay in debt, especially when it comes to real estate, because that's an asset. Right. You know? And my philosophy is I believe in assets. I just don't believe in debt. Right. Now, I don't have a problem because I have a mortgage on my home, yeah. you know. Uh, but, I mean, what's, I'm not going to have 28 properties yeah. with mortgages on because if if life was to happen, I don't have the income to pay mm -hmm. for 28 houses. Not, not if, when life happens. Thank you for correcting me. Because it will. It will happen. COVID showed us that. It's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. Um, why would you say it's important for especially black people, black families, but really all people, because I have a, have a very large audience, right. to be debt free? Um, you think about being a slave and you think about being told you're not good enough mm. and you can't do anything. But in the same breath, you're doing everything. Mm. Raising children, mining crops, picking cotton, building houses, being beat, all the tormented, all of those crazy things. You think about how they literally had no control over what they were producing. And then you think about us right now in today's time. Would you want to have a bunch of stuff that's not really yours? Mm. I mean, even when you're debt-free, you still got taxes, so we already got a battle with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But would you want to have something that you're, like, living off of, it's fruitful, you love it, you're excited about it, and a person like a mortgage company has a do-on-sell clause or, you know, they have something where they're selling your mortgage to somebody else and they're just changing your terms and they pull your livelihood from right up under your feet. Mm. Think about that as an individual. And then think about that as a family. What you tell your kids? When a sheriff come knocking on your door, locking you out your house because you missed the payment, because life happened. As if life doesn't happen to them. Right. So you think about, you know, what's your end goal in life? Yeah. And 
you understand that the more you relinquish control, yeah. well, the more you set yourself back, ultimately. Yeah. So that's how I look at it. I think um, you asked a really good question earlier mm. before we started. See, we had, like, double interviews. It was a vibe. It was a vibe. Oh, um, vibe. But you said, how hard is it to get started in real estate debt-free? Right. And I said, it's just as hard as it is to get out of debt once you start real estate with debt. And that was just so golden. I was about to ask yeah. you that question. It's, it's the same process. Right. You're going to, it's this, these things are inevitable, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. But if you're constantly in debt, you're in bondage. How can you be financially free if you're in financial bondage? Mm. I want to be financially free. And the first thing you do is get a loan. Yeah. What's free about owing somebody? Right. You're right. not free. Right. Freedom is, I'm cool. I yeah. can sell what I want to sell. You know, not worrying about having to give this bank the profit off the top because I owe them. Yeah. Um, we even talked about, like, the American dream. Yeah. People automatically push FHA and conventional. Right. 30 years is a long time. Even if you purchase the house at 20, in 30 years, you'll be 50. <laughs> I'm 50 years old. Nobody wants to stay in one place for 50 years or 30 years, pardon me. So what you got to do now, rent it out. <laughs> Nobody has the common sense to pay off the loan before they rent it out. So now you got a tenant. This the hack. This the right. game. It's right. is a game. Right. You got your tenant paying your mortgage. See, tenant don't pay. Yeah, yeah. You done got another mortgage. Yeah. Because you ain't go buy your house debt free. You done went from robbing Peter. Right. To now having to rob Paul. Right. You got two debts. Right. Two houses. Yeah. Only one of them is producing. Right. And then it stops. And then for you, your house, like your primary, that's not an asset. Yeah. It's a liability. Yeah. You have utilities. <laughs> yeah. You got to decorate it. You got to put food in your refrigerator. Yeah, yeah. You got to keep it clean. Yeah. You got so many things. So the only fulfillment you get from that house is that you get to live there. Yeah. And I always say they, they use equity. You get equity and appreciation. and the, Come on. People don't file their taxes the right way. Right. We're not going to sit here and say people writing off. They, they, they're not doing it. Yeah, yeah. They don't know how. Yeah. So I'm not faulting them. Right. But if you had a piggy bank, which is your equity, that you never cracked open, does it matter what's in it? Right. Honestly, let's say you got a little glass bank right on your desk and you're putting money into it over and over. If you never crack it open, right. it doesn't matter. Right, right. When you die, somebody else might get the piggy bank. But if they don't know there's money in there, they might not even look. That's true. And that's, again, you don't teach your children how to look in the piggy bank. We don't have these conversations, you know? So I would just rather live life on my own terms and give myself the opportunity to figure it out. There's mm. room for failure and there's room for error when you don't have somebody down your back like, you owe me. Yeah. Every single month plus interest. Yeah. That's scary. Now, are you teaching people how to get into the real estate game without debt? So I have a course called the No Debt Real Estate Method. Mm -hmm. But I think I uh, I kind of fell back from teaching. I like it. I yeah, do yeah. like the idea of it. Um, I have a lot of successful students and clients as well. Mm -hmm. Like now I teach financial advisors of athletes. Mm. How to do this. Like NFL, NBA. I do those things a lot. But it's a mindset first. I'm mm. realizing it. Yeah, it's it is. It's not money. It is. So, you know, I, we talked about banks with predatory lending. Yeah. Well, right now it's predatory teaching. So me saying, hey, this is how you do it, doesn't mean that you are mentally prepared to get it done. Right. So right now I just focus, like I do my TED Talks and I talk about being ready, you know, knowing that you're good enough, mm -hmm. having faith, trusting your process. Yeah. You know, generational wealth, you're on one side or the other. Yeah. Really simplifying yeah. the whole real estate process as a whole. Yeah. And then we can get into how to go to the auction, wholesale. That part is simple. Yeah. Not easy, but very simple. Yeah. No. I I, yeah. I, I love this, man. And and this show has just been, uh, this is crazy. I, I got I got two more quick questions for you. Okay. Um, one is, while we were talking earlier, did you really buy a hotel? So, let me tell you about that, by accident. You bought a hotel by accident? By accident. How do you buy a hotel by accident? Well, I mean, you got to afford it. But what ended up happening was auction. I was going crazy with the auction. This was a $600 run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did it with probably, I think, 300 and something people. First, I, I was like being sneaky. I thought I got over. I'm going to try this. <laughs> trying to with my friends. They're like, yeah, right. work. Ask your sister. I don't right. know if we can keep coming back. Right? It's working now. Right. So I'm like, oh, we can make this a thing. Right. So we're using Instagram. My husband's like, yo, you got to, this is a business. Right. I was like, okay. I created a PayPal, like business owners. Wow. No LLC. Y'all don't know what I'm doing. Eventually, somebody was like, limited liability. I was like, oh, I Googled it, you know, came up with it. And after a while, it became very lucrative, but very popular. Mm -hmm. It's one thing for me to say I'm something. It's another thing for somebody else to say, no, she's, she's serious. She helped me. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of kept going. 
long story short, I got the attention of a mayor that wasn't even in the state that I live in. Mm. This is a whole nother mayor mm-hmm. on Instagram who was going through a redevelopment process of his city. Mm-hmm. He said, you got all these people on your Instagram talk about how you helped them buy houses. Well, I got some houses they can buy. Mm. So at this time, I didn't know. Again, I just show up and learn. So I was like, okay, let's auction them off. Let's auction them off. Yeah. They were owned by the land bank. So because they were state property, you can't sell them, but people can invest in them. So I couldn't auction them off for profit, but we can put investment strategies together. So when we sat down and kind of talked about what our plans and our goals were, he said, oh, it's a hotel. First of all, this specific place has a lot of hotels that just didn't make the cut. Mm. It, just, it just didn't work for them. Everybody was going bankrupt. Yeah. Things weren't as lucrative. You know, casinos weren't as popular. Because if you got one place that has 50 casinos, who's to say who's going to go to which one? Right, right. So, it's this building. Oh, terrible. The building was very ugly. Uh, <laughs> uh, still reinforcement and concrete, though. So, no yeah. asbestos and no mold. That's right. all we could hope for at the time. Okay. And it just made sense because I wanted to do transitional housing for and, people who aged out of foster care. Okay, got you. So, that was one of those things where it was a creative deal structure. Um, sat down with the owner. Hey, this is what our plans are. You know, with transitional housing, not to say too many numbers, but you get 20000 a month per person. Okay. And that depends on the square footage of the room you put them in. Mm-hmm. So if you have 100 rooms and you're making $20,000 per room for occupancy, you get an idea of the numbers. Right. If you put two people in those rooms, you literally double that number monthly. Right? Wow. So you sit there and you talk to this person who got this abandoned hotel and you're like, yo, Give it to me, partner with me, you know, how you want to do it. And that was a way that we were able to get started without the upfront cash. Seller financing is a thing. Right, right. Seller, even That's tried and true for me today. This market is eight. I hate right, it. Right. I do not do market deals. Right. Everything I do is off market. Right. The auction has a bunch of inventory. People are losing it. They look like us. They're not educated. You stop it. Mm. You're going to lose it. When the bank takes it, they're not going to give you any money. Yeah. Let me give you enough to move forward. And I'll take over the property. Just like that. Yeah. Simple. So that was kind of what the hotel was, except they wanted $2 million, so it wasn't super extensive. Okay. And they weren't losing it either. Yeah. But it was sitting there for years. Yeah. Not doing anything. So you got people in it now for transitional? So now it's being fixed. It's being fixed. It's being fixed. And then y'all will open it up for transitional? We are. And then, so I was running for state representative, okay. too. And I got the attention of another mayor. Because I'm in a town that's really small. Right. I won't say where I live, but it's like... The Ozark kind of just more affluent. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay. The state rep said, hey, I'm going for a congressman now. Yeah. You should take my place. But she couldn't sell me on it. She just said it. And I had to figure out what that meant. Right. So I was like, okay, let me run. I don't know what I'm doing. My, I really am one of those people who just arise to challenges. I'm insane a little. <laughs> so anyway, as I'm doing that, um, midway through, I realized, wait, I'm not ready to campaign. This is crazy. Boom. But the mayor calls. Mm. I heard you running. You'll be a great asset. I looked you up. I'm like, how did you find me? She was like, yeah, you're unlisted, but you called the Democratic office not too long ago. Wow. Because financially, I'm a Republican, right. but I'm a Democrat at heart. I got you. Like, it's just, it's just one of those things where uh, if I get to the other side, I'm going to have to bring my people and make them understand what it means to be a Republican. Gotcha. Not just what it looks like. Gotcha. But anyways, so she, she's the, the mayor of my town. She's yep. a woman. And she volunteers at a shelter, substance abuse. So she takes me to this place. Right? Mm-hmm. And it's an old resort. So this is right up my alley. Resort, hotel, boom. And they're making $56,000 per person a month. And she sat me down with the owner. Like, you can never underestimate your brand and just how you carry a name. Because some of this stuff just falls. And I'm telling my phone wrong one day. And right. the person said their name. I'm like, this is the map. Cover the phone like, this is the mayor. This is crazy. Right? Um, but yeah, so there's so much promise. And that feels, I'm sure, we will purchase more commercial buildings because the way we're looking at it is just a commercial building. Wow. You say hotel and you think of hospitality and vacationing. That's not what we're aiming for. We're aiming for bigger space, more rooms. Bigger space, more rooms. That's it. Rooms. Maximize your earning, poten- earning potential while minimizing your liability and helping as many people as you can in one shot because it'll be easier to do that opposed to just going to find 100 houses because you'll get 100 houses, but they'll probably be spread out, you know. I don't know what else to do with the show. I mean, you, 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 you and your husband have accomplished a lot and definitely have the tools. Where can my people follow you to where they can learn more? They can get deeper into this because I think that you, you have the, the answers to 
really how to get into this space without racking up debt. And we can't yeah. do that all in one, one hour. Yeah. And so I definitely want to encourage my tribe, if they want to get into the real estate game, to build generational wealth um, and to how to really do it wisely during this season, especially with the housing market being so crazy high right now. Where can they follow you to find out more of your information? Rosebuds Investments. Everywhere. So Rose Buds, Buds investments. investments. My grandmom's name was Rose. That's where it came from. Yeah. Tried and true. I didn't put too much thought to it. Grandma was Rose. I'm a Rose Bud. There you go. Rose Buds Investments on I all platforms. It. And we're going to create a code. We're going to create an Anthony because I, I liked your, your pool code. You said go to anthonyonell.com slash savings. I want something like that. I want something personalized too. Since the alpha's coming out, I want something that belongs to me. So we'll, uh, we'll create an Anthony code okay. for your tribe. Yeah. And listen, you know, pace yourself. Yeah. You can get rich quick. But it's the reason why they created the term get rich quick scheme. Wealth is not quick. Mm. Wealth is long term. Mm -hmm. Wealth has substance. Yeah. Wealth has a good foundation. <sighs> you do not want to pour a foundation full of water. It will not sustain. Mm. Create your foundation. You know, figure out what it is that you need mm -hmm. before you start thinking about what you want. Yeah. Right? Love. It's not really money that separates people. It's desires. Yeah. This is... Oh, this is amazing, y'all. This is amazing, y'all. We're going to drop all of her information in today's show notes, so make sure to check that out. And as we're closing out today's show, I want to leave y'all with today's scripture. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 16. It says, she considers a field and buys it from her earnings. She planted a vineyard. That literally speaks volumes to today's show. And here is today's affirmation. And I want you to repeat it after me. If you're watching this on YouTube, type it in the comments. Um, if you are listening to this on a podcast, in your car, you're in the shower, you're cooking, just repeat this out loud at least five times. Type it at least five times. I have been given endless talents, which I utilize to benefit me and the people I love. Um, and we literally learned that today. Um, so listen, hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed today's show and you watch this on YouTube, please hit the thumbs up button and share this with a friend. Share this with someone and show them it is possible. All right. So it's your boy, Anthony O'Neill. Check out my girl's information in today's show notes. Don't forget to check out my friends over there at Prize Pool. They will bless you so you can start saving that money so you can start investing like Jamisa and her amazing husband. All right. Peace out, y'all.